Are your feet ready? Spring is here. Let's get rid of dry flaking heels and sweaty, smelly feet. Says, I am Dr. Simone and I'm so happy you're here today because today's video is a one that was highly requested because I'm going to help you get your feet and your family's feet spring and summer ready. You know, during the winter, we get kind of lazy sometimes and we neglect our feet because we're in boots and thick fluffy socks and nobody's really paying attention to them. But then once the springtime comes around, we start scrambling for ways to get our feet looking good. Well, if you have dry flaking skin, I can help. If you have skin that's a little too moist and really sweaty, I can help. If you have uh, feet that smell to the point where you can clear a room and you take your shoes off, I can help. <laughs> but my disclaimer, as a healthcare professional, I have to let you know, if you suffer or if you are concerned about an actual skin infection or a serious skin disorder, see a podiatrist, see a dermatologist, okay? But if you just have good old dry flaking skin or sweaty skin or stinky skin or stinky feet, I should say, then I'll help out. Okay, so if you want to find out how to get your feet spring ready and summer ready, stay tuned. with the environment I'd like to tell patients that a lot of times it's not that they're doing something wrong it's just that the environment which would be the shoe is not being taken care of properly you know we tend to find shoes that we love to wear and especially gym shoes we wear them all the time every day to work out or every day to work and we don't really give them a chance to dry and air out so what I like to tell people is you have to be careful of the environment that you put your feet in every day. So if you're concerned about, you know, odor when you take your shoes off, then I can help. What I like to say is there are a couple over-the-counter things that I usually use. Now, I don't really deal with sweaty uh, skin or a lot of excess flaking or odor to my feet, but I do like to always have my feet ready in case something like that were to start to creep up, okay? So these are also maintenance tips. So if, even if you don't deal with these problems, it's really good just foot hygiene uh, and good foot care, okay? So the first thing you want to do is in order to prepare your the shoe or the environment that your feet have to be in all the time is keep them clean, keep them dry. We can't wash our shoes, not most of them at least. So what I say is go to your local store, Walgreens, Walmart, whatever, and pick up good old Lysol, okay? And Lysol is good because it is antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal. So it covers a ton of uh, just slight infection and germs that can be lingering around in the shoe. Now I have the jasmine and rain scent but you can have any fragrance you want but I like Lysol for everything so I usually get them in bulk. But the thing with this is it's a spray form so you just mist it or spray it in your shoe right but some shoes have a deep toe box so you can't really get to them and you don't want to drench or saturate the fabric because it might ruin the fabric or the uh, of the shoe so what i've started to use is just the wipes okay so i'll use the lysol wipes and i find that that works out really well too and then of course you want to let your shoes dry at least overnight okay so if you tend to wear the same shoe every day then you probably want to do the lysol at least every other day or even every day just to allow the shoe to air dry and uh, be as fresh as possible and decrease the bacterial load or decrease the fungal or the back or, or the viral load so that you're not representing it to your foot every day okay so grab some Lysol I don't have stock in Lysol or anything I should though because I use enough of it but definitely just misting out your shoes or wiping your shoes down it can be very helpful all right the second thing now sometimes I have patients who deal with really dry skin and like I said people tend to forget to take care of their feet during the winter and then they run to the podiatrist's office like Dr. Josie what am I gonna do let me tell you you have to really be careful when it comes to lotions and moisturizers and ointments. A lot of people use Vaseline and that's it and they wonder what's wrong? How come my feet are still so dry? Well, Vaseline is good to keep moisture in. 
if you already have moisture there. It's more of a skin protectant. So if you have dry, cracked skin and you've used a moisturizer and you want to help keep the moisture in place, then you can seal it with Vaseline or a Vaseline-based moisturizer. So the one I like to recommend to people is Aquaphor. But there are a ton of them, and you can use regular Vaseline also. But Aquaphor is a good brand. It's actually a Eucerin brand. And if you look at it, it has no fragrance, no dyes, no nothing. It's literally just like um, an ointment or Vaseline, okay, like petroleum jelly. But you don't use this until you have used something that's actually a moisturizer, okay? This is a skin protectant. A lot of people get that confused and think, oh, I use Vaseline, it should help. Not necessarily. If you have dry, cracked, flaking skin, you have to use something to put moisture there that you don't already have, okay? So what I used to tell, I like to tell people is, use something, I really love CeraVe. It's a bit pricey and I'm all out of it right now, but CeraVe, Nivea, um, Jergens, all of those are fair moisturizers. Nivea cream, I find to be a really good one, okay? Like I said, these aren't sponsored. I use these every day. I bought this with my own money. But I like Nivea because it has a very light, fresh fragrance. It's a cream, all right? It's a cream base. And it's extremely thick. So a little bit goes a long way. Like I said, it has a nice, fresh fragrance to it. And another thing too I want to always remind people of is even if you are not diabetic and you have perfect feet, perfect skin, you never put lotions, moisturizers, or ointments between the toes, okay? So what I tell people is if you're putting your lotion on, on your feet, open palms only. And you just go like this on the top and on the bottom. If you're using the pulp of your finger to put your lotion or moisturizer, you're probably putting it the wrong place. Instead, you want to use open palms only and moisturize, okay, like that. Now, of course, if you have an infection or if you're given a prescription for um, bacteria or fungal infection, then go between your toes if you're instructed to do so. But if it's just a regular moisturizer, no, 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 no. Nobody should ever, 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 ever put moisturizers between your toes. Why? Because badness happens. Excess moisture causes skin to break down and then people get infections. So no one should do that. Okay? All right. I'm done with my soapbox, but it's a really big deal because I've seen so many people come in with that problem and then I say, well, what are you doing? They tell me, oh, I put my lotion on. How do you put it on? They show me and I can definitely see that they're putting lotions and cream between the toes. Okay. Now, another thing too, you say, well, but I have a lot of buildup. It's it caked on there. I haven't seen my, you know, the bottom of my feet since, I don't know, November. <laughs> so here's what I usually recommend to help keep your feet supple and to get rid of the flaking, dry, uh, unhealthy skin. Of course, you can get like a foot file. This one is a Dr. Scholl's brand. And I like it, the, the shape of it's good, it fits really well in the hand. But what I don't really particularly care for is this. On the inside, there's like a, a very coarse cheese grater type material that you can use to file your feet. However, I find that this is too aggressive, too abrasive, and it can really cause trauma if you don't use it properly. So what I say is just be gentle, take your time, and use like the sandpaper side on the other, um, on the back. And I like this. And usually what I like to do is I couple it with this. And this is just like an exfoliating acne cream all right i'm not sure if you can see that but even though it's good for acne and the face i find that it actually works for all over the body right we you know you you have to exfoliate your entire body and i find that this works really well even for my skin on my feet so when i couple it with this then i get really great results so really think about that using just your facial exfoliant on your feet right okay so we've gotten rid of some of the odor and we've gotten rid of the dry flaking skin and we have put moisture in and then sealed it off with our um, ointment. So the only thing left to deal with is those people who have really sweaty skin. Now for whatever reason, some people just have overactive 
sweat glands. And that's fine. Now, like I said, if you have an underlying condition that needs medical management, you definitely want to get that diagnosed and treated appropriately. But if you find that when you go to the gym or if you just go through a day of work, your feet are a bit moist and of course they have an associated odor, then here are some things you can try. So definitely at the beginning of the day, if I'm wearing closed toed shoes or if I'm going to the gym, I use good old over the counter antiperspirant, okay? Antiperspirant, it's nothing fancy. I like the Arid Extra Dry just because the amount of antiperspirant it has in there, you know, percent wise is a little bit higher than some of the other over the counter brands. And so I like that. I also like the fact that it comes in a spray, not only a roll on, because for me, I think that with the roll on, you can transfer whatever flaking skin or bacteria from your foot into the remaining antiperspirant so for me it's a bit gross so I don't like that but for the spray you just spray it on and you're good to go and it dries extremely quickly now of course there are foot sprays you can use those they work just as well however they might not be necessarily antiperspirant which if you have excessively sweaty skin you want something that cuts down on the sweat plus if you don't have a fungal infection you don't necessarily need an antifungal right so try using over-the-counter antiperspirant. So look on the back, make sure that it's an antiperspirant and keep it moving. You can get one with a deodorant also in it, but for me, I'm just more interested in the antiperspirant. This is an antiperspirant and a deodorant. Uh, so, you know, you get the best of both worlds, right? So um, there's also something that I've begun telling my patients about because, you know, sometimes people try everything. They do everything right. And still there's maybe like some lingering odor or they just feel like though the, the, the smell in their, their shoes or the, their feet have still, you know, it's like a little underlying, underlying uh, smell that's not pleasant, okay? So what I have started to recommend is getting like an essential oil that has a nice fragrance. Um, and preferably one that has some kind of like antibacterial or healing properties uh, and just putting a couple drops in your lotion or cream. What I like to recommend is tea tree oil or melaleuca oil. This is just a random brand that I got. And the good thing with this one is that it is 100%, so it's very concentrated, so a couple drops goes a long way. And then also, too, the tip of it is in a drop-off form, so it doesn't just pour out. It literally just does drop by drop. So I like that because it helps to control the amount. Like I said, it's a, it is a very uh, potent or concentrated oil, so you don't need a lot of it. Now, it's the fragrance or the smell is not for everybody, okay? So definitely, if you've never smelled tea tree oil or melaleuca oil, you definitely want to get a whiff before you decide to make that commitment. But once it's dilute or diluted, I find that it has a very fresh, very light fragrance that I think is good. And it just honestly helps to cut down on some of the bacteria because in and of itself, it is good for like uh, cuts and scrapes and abrasions because I think it actually has like antibacterial properties. So I think it's a good uh, bonus, something to think about. So I'm always coming up with tips and tricks and, and I like to share them with my patients. So now I'm sharing them with you. I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions or comments or if you'd like to see more foot and ankle videos, definitely let me know. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, um, I think it was last week, I did a webinar that dealt with diabetic foot amputations and ways to prevent amputations. So if you haven't seen that, even if you are not diabetic, we all know somebody or many people who are diabetic, share the information with them, share the video with them. The information can save limbs and ultimately save lives. So if you haven't seen that, definitely watch it. Uh, and then I guess I will see you on my next video. As always, thank you so much for watching. And remember, I am Dr. Simone and I will either see you at the top or from the top, you decide. Hello, Dr. Simone here. Welcome back to my channel, Dr. Simone Says. Today's video is going to be a webinar and I'll be dealing with diabetic foot care and a 